So what I thought I'd start over here is going into the admin console and really just you know talking about the admin accounts first. And the admin accounts basically is a look at it as a as a holder that you apply your policies in. In this case, the holder could be for your users that have your regular archiving capabilities in this case, or your users that have the deleted user capability, they're non-billable users, so, so we keep the archive there, we maintain the archive, but we're not billing you for those users. So these are the type of silos we're talking about from a archiving perspective. And I'm, all my conversation will be based on archiving perspectives. Obviously, if you're using GMS, those users will also use that to apply policies such as spam, virus, content attachment management. <coughs> So it's a, user, it's a holder for those services. Admins will be transitioned over, as Jack said. You know, in the admins rights, we'll have admin roles. In those roles, as the screen comes up, we'll also create different roles from a vault perspective. So the rights in there to manage the, the vault services. So if I look at the privileges for a super admin, that's a person that has access to all the services that's available in apps. If they have just vault search capabilities or vault retention capabilities, you'll see they won't have any of the admin services that are associated with Gmail, but they will have access to the appropriate services you assign them in vault. So if I give a person admin rights vault, all of it, you see they'll have all the different rights settings. You at any time can create different roles and add different privileges to people. So you can create a custom role and give them as much or as little access to the vault or the apps section that you require. Very straightforward, very easy to use. Okay, once you have uh, logged into that, you can go over to the matter side. <clears throat> and in the matter side, as Jack was talking about, you have your ability to you know, set your retention policy. So in our demo site here, you see he talked about moving over your existing retention policies. So you'll see right here, in this retention policy, he has the label 12 months on here, newer than 12 months, label delete, and this retain that data indefinitely. You can change that type of data to a, a date range. You can create a little more, more date ranges, as Jack said earlier. You can change this policy and put, apply it to different OUs. I'm going to cancel, yeah. not do it anymore. And I'll just, I'll just point out here, in the demo environment, we have everything set to indefinitely, so we don't lose any of the data we have. This is one of our test environments we're showing you. So when we transition over your policies, if you had a 12-month policy in GMD, it would show up as 365 days, just uh, so right. you're aware of that. Yeah, and this is the, the one policy Jack was talking about where we're saying everything is going to be held indefinitely until you had a chance to verify your settings before you delete this policy. Now, we Creating a policy is very straightforward. You're going to create add a rule. You're going to assign it to the OU you're interested in if you have or at the top level. You can do a date range. You can do your search term. This could be against, against it. I guess this example here has attachment, has a different label. It could be for a different user, and so on and so forth. It's really straightforward, easy to set these things up. You still have your full Boolean searches. So you can think of this almost as as your safe search, but we actually have that in another area as well. And so one of the things, just to uh, reiterate what Dave went over earlier, we have granular permissions here, so you can set this so people can have access to the retention policies or do not have access to retention. Um, you can have many retention policies. If you're a Gmail user, you can also create policies based on labels. So if you wanted to create a label for your users, so a lot of more, a lot more flexibility with how you run retention on here. And again, that label colon caret deleted will help you ensure that only user deleted messages are treated or purged by the archive. Again, if you don't want that type of functionality, you want messages only to be held for a specific period and then purged from the user mailbox, just remove that label colon caret deleted. So that will actually just act directly on the mailbox. Yeah. And then lastly, before I leave the, the retention policy, you can set a retention policy for the entire domain. Very simply, don't have a retention policy, use the rules, set a your date range. This could be your you know, one year, 10 years, 100 years, or just retain indefinitely. Again, retention policies, rules from domain policy. So if you have any rules that are longer or shorter than the domain rule, the rule will win. An important thing to remember. 
in matters, just like they were called investigations, you have matters that you have created, you have matters that have been shared with you, and I'll talk more about that later. You have matters that you've processed and you've closed, and then you have your matters that you have trashed and you're ready to get rid of, and they'll be aged off automatically after 30 days. When you create a matter, <coughs> you simply give it a name, a description, and create the matter. Very straightforward, very easy to use. If I go to existing matters, you know, I can also now create holes. And here's where we can do something very interesting is now I can give it a name for the hold. This would be like your saved search results. I can add users, 1, 2, 3, 10, whatever you need. I can set a date range. And now I can add actually add a search term. So I can say has attachment or you know, contains data with an email, has a specific ID information. You know, all the searches that are available has a wildcard. It could be a proximity search. Whatever you need to find that data. You can actually do that data. For example, if I want to do a proximity search, you know, I'd have to say around and then say two, um, <coughs> two words or three words, whatever you're looking for, the data you're, in, you're interested in. Okay. Then you can go to your search capability and you can start searches. In this case, we have one very simple one here. It may save search. We're looking for accounts deleted user, VFA user one. And if I just do a quick search or a quick count or reset that, I'll just do a quick search. It goes out and finds that data for you. So it's a small little database. It'll come up, and here's all the all the search results associated with that search criteria account. BFE number one deleted user. You give that give that data. You can export that data. You can save that query. Okay. Uh, you can share. Now sharing is something that's sort of interesting. Is it's like in GMD, you have the ability to save your search result sets or your, or your investigations. Here we have the ability to share, uh, sharing anything at, at, at any level. I can share my holds, I can share my searches, you know, and so on and so forth. And I can start adding people, and it has the ability to do, you know, type ahead. If I start at typing ahead, it automatically takes advantage of that information, and you can add the users that you want to share that data with. Again, sharing data with these users, they must have access to the vault. They must have an administrative privilege that can be able to read that data. You can also copy yourself to make sure you know yourself that that data has been shared. Okay. I also can export that data. What I've done here is I've pre exported that information. And in our export here, really in a basic system here, each transit, uh, export will have an XML metadata. So this basically tells me all the accounts and where that data resides within the accounts in Gmail. We have an export data of the accounts. Uh, of all the data that was exported for that account. We have a XML file for each individual that's associated with this export. And then we have an MD5 checksum. You can download all the files or one at a time, the data we're interested in. <laughs> all this stuff then can be used to massage the data. You can convert it with uh, third-party tools. You can look at it with Thunderbird or uh, all of the uh, uh, tools that your um, legal firms may use will be able to uh, extract this data Record. We also have the ability to audit the data. So in auditing data, this is the audit report that Jack was talking about, where any actions that are taken will automatically be tracked and maintained and are immutable, cannot be altered. It will be downloaded as a CSV file, so you can do a date range. You can pick what data you're interested in, and you can select the vault administrators you want to extract that data from. And here's an example of that data that's been extracted. And you can see the date it was the action, what was the action, who was the user who performed that action, and any of the pertinent data like the name, the email, the resource URL, the query string, what organization. In this case, we show you the detail of what that information was. And going back to the main page, I also have reports. I can see. The audit report I just showed you, I can see what domains are on hold if I have a domain hold in place. I also can see what users are held and I place the user in hold. And you can see what matter they're associated with. So if you click on this one, it'll take you to the matter that they're associated with. So a person can be associated to more than one matter, just like in GMD. A person cannot be deleted or, 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 or their information cannot be deleted until the hold is removed from all matters in this case. And so, Dave, I'm just going to add 
one uh, additional like comment here. So in the audit trail that Dave was walking through on the domain holds, what you can do in Vault, and this is very similar to what you had in the save search sets or save search results, I should say, in GMD, is you can actually place a hold not on a specific user, but looking for a specific date range or if you wanted a specific term. So let's say when a widget is the term, you could place a hold across the entire domain. That would be a domain hold. Um, as Dave pointed out, the user holds target specific individuals. So there's different ways to put data on hold in GMD today. Sorry, in Vault versus GMD. Um, apologize for that little snafu in my talk there. But you have a lot of flexibility here. The audit trails are extremely robust. They cannot be altered by anyone. So they exist in the system, and they are um, immutable. Yeah, as Jack was talking, as I clicked on the, the wheel here. This shows you we can always send feedback if you have um, enhancement requests or anything of that nature. But we also support a complete help interface. And we can search directly right from here from help, or we can get started. You know, I'll just go to the get started interface, and you can see this how to get started. I can blow that out to a full page, and I can making sure Vault is turned on, assigning licenses. We're going to go back and show you that in a second. You know, granting privileges, everything I talked about, all of it's available to you, very simple and easy to get to the data. Now, and the last thing that's most important, and I'll go back to the admin console, but this is an important interface. I mean, Jack, uh, it is managing your licenses. This is, to me, it's important because right here's where the interface comes. As Jack said, this is a policy change or an action change that you'll come up with. So you have two licenses and apps. You have your active license that users are billable for, and you assign the users, you can find unassigned users, and you can manage your license. So if I assign you if I assign users, it shows me a list of all the users that have vault accounts. If they're unassigned, they'll be in this section here, and I can assign them account. If I unassign them, I can do something with them. I can move them over to the uh, non-billable side, and I can see how many licenses have been used and what employees, and I can do automatic uh, license assigning. I can do bulk signing, so I can actually add or delete or modify as needed. But if I go back to the billing main interface, I also have the prescription side, so the former employee slides. So this will change that to that BFE. And if I turn that on, I just simply have the same exact interface, but now I'm moving users over here. We're no longer ingesting new data. We're just maintaining the data that has been loaded into the system from a four month and again, I can unassign, I can manage the license. So the key thing here is it's ease of management, speed of recovery. You, you notice in all these searches, um, unlike Postini, it's very, very quick. There's simple data in here in this case, but you can see we can find data in my matters and search for that data very, very quickly. And I think that's a huge improvement. Again, you also have that sharing always available to you. You always can look at the email. You always can look at the original. All that data you're accustomed to is still available to you. You can always show the details and you always can print the data. And, and then all part of it in the multiple languages, I can translate this on the fly if I'm using the translation capability. So if it's in Japanese, I can change it to English, or English to Japanese, very easily. 